This is Deliverance Ministry.fm video cast number 31. Hello again, everyone. Welcome to this episode of Deliverance Ministry.fm, where we give you proven insights about the demonic realm and deliverance ministry so you can wage spiritual warfare more effectively. My name is Dr. Don Ibbotson, here as always with my co host and colleague, Dr. Phyllis Tarbox. Good afternoon, Phyllis. Hi, Don. We're filming this in the afternoon here. I don't know when you're listening to it, but we're here in the afternoon and uh, sunny Florida. Sunny Florida, yep. Not so sunny. Yeah, a little overcast today. <laughs> Summer. But, yeah, not cold. And um, I'll, today we're going to do, it's like I mentioned the last time, really something we never done. We've done it. We do, we're in the middle of a two-part series on spiritual roots of sickness and disease. And I encourage you to listen to part one. Okay, on the uh, on the website and certainly on iTunes. Before you listen to this, you're going to miss a lot. I'm going to give you a short review here, but not a lot. And the reason we did break it up into two parts is because we just have so much so much material to cover and in the first session we talked a little bit about um give you know body soul and spirit we talked about syndromes and disorders talked in general about some diseases and and, and i'll review as i say some of that but uh, in this session in part two we really want to spend the time sharing some real life testimonies and success stories we've had with people who come in the door dealing with physical things and needed physical healing and and how there was many spiritual roots behind those so that's what we're going to focus on here in this session stay tuned to the end I want to tell you how to get a, a free copy of our deliverance ministry plain and simple manual tell you how to get access to all of our our resources our free resources videos podcasts and whatnot and and also pre-announce a new um, ministry partners program that we're going to be developing here so with that let's jump right into it um want to just in the first session in 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 part one of this we we talked about the spiritual roots of sickness and disease we talked about the body soul and spirit that we can have um uh you know, physical infirmities and sicknesses in our body that we need healing from. Sometimes we need deliverance from physical conditions in our body. But many times in the medical realm, people come in and they've been diagnosed with um, syndromes and disorders, Mm -hmm. right? That's a very common theme in the medical profession. Literally thousands of disorders i think now and growing where you know you you name it add adhd Mm -hmm. cfs ibs um so on and these coming in and they're diagnosed with these conditions and these are many in the mental and the emotional realm Mm -hmm. right some of them certainly manifest physically and we need and the, the the common theme many times is people can't get healing there's no um, magical or there's no medical wonder drug to treat some of these things. And the, the point that we made last time is that many a times there are spirits, uh, demonic spirits that are behind right. a lot of the afflictions. They can be a sign behind afflictions in our, in our, in our body, certain cancers mm-hmm. can, there can be spirits behind those. And we talked about this, the scripture in, in where Jesus came across a woman who was crippled by a spirit of infirmity. Right. He laid hands, he called that spirit out. Right okay, out. That's one element of healing. But the other element we talked about, whereas in the many sicknesses and diseases, and we, we, we touched on arthritis, we talked about endometriosis, chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, certain types of arthritis, um, We how many times other spirits... Spirits like fear, depression, anger, self bitter, self hatred, can be can open the door to these to these um, um, spirits that are tormenting our body. And so the idea is, let's if you want to get healing from some of these physical things, there's probably very likely something behind that mm-hmm. that opened the door. Could be like we talked about fear or anger, and so. And that's in a lot of our um, materials that we use, a lot of the data that we've accumulated apart from things we've learned on our own is, is through a gentleman by the name of, of Henry Wright, Pastor Henry Wright. He's a man up in, in Pleasanton or up in Georgia. I don't want to say the name exactly. I'm not sure what city it is, but he's a pastor, has a ministry up there, has a wonderful book called A More Excellent Way, mm-hmm. Spiritual Roots of Sicknesses and Diseases, and I encourage you to pick that up. And um, so that's where he 
talks about and you know, introduces this idea that spirits invite in other spirits. And mm-hmm. many times before we can get the physical healing or sustain a physical healing, we need to have, um, you know, to get to the, you know, deal with the, the, the roots. core, yeah. the roots, you know, bitterness. And so right. that's kind of an overview. And that's, and the reason we like this so much, as I say, is because it's something we've incorporated, had already incorporated into our deliverance ministry process. We have a process approach to people. We prepare them with teaching and we, we end up calling out these other spirits fear and anger and guilt and self-hatred before we even get to the infirmity we don't just jump right in and start calling out these infirmity spirits it's like let's deal with these other spirits first so that's kind of a, a brief um it's a very brief summary of that first teaching I encourage you to go back and listen to it in its entirety but with that then we want to spend the balance of this podcast just sharing with you some real life stories of people that we've had that have come through the door mm-hmm. And one of the first ones that I I love to share always is Sandy. And she came in, she was struggling. Uh, She was in chronic pain, Uh, joint pain. She had thyroid problems. I think she was on several different kinds of medications. She was just a mess. She had her, her testimony was she had a lot of abuse. She had a lot of torment, a lot of torture in her early life. And even after she was away from that, uh, she didn't get healing. She didn't, her body didn't come back into order. It just got worse because after the stress of being underneath all that and now being newly married with a new husband who was very loving. So she, I just want, she had an abusive childhood. She had a very it? abusive childhood. Lots of fear. Lots of fear. Fear based house. Yeah, fear based house. Very abusive. And, but then as she grew older, she held on to all the resentment and she had a lot of bitterness. So the bitterness over the childhood even started manifesting in bad ways to her marriage and everything else. And she came in extremely sick. So when we took her through deliverance, um, she had a very powerful deliverance. So the story after that was about a week later, she came back in for her follow-up. And she said to me, she said, I don't have any pain. And I said, excuse me? And she said, all of my pain is completely gone. It left with the bitterness. And I said, wow, really? She said, yeah, it was so wild. The day after my deliverance, I got up from bed and I, you know, she said I would prepare myself. I would almost brace myself for the pain because, you know, I'd have to get ready for it. By the time my feet hit the floor, I would be in so much pain. So she said, I got up, I braced myself. I took a couple of steps and I just stood there and I recognized I had none None. Now this was one day after her deliverance. It was powerful. Now it took a little while, but she said she was still, she was struggling. She had been diagnosed with, you know, thyroid problems, chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, all of those things. So, you know, she had no pain, but her energy levels were just going down, 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 down. Right. So I, uh, I asked her, you know, she said, she said she had a lot of problems and She said to me, you know, I came to wonder, like God healed me of my, of my, my, my bitterness and my my pain. And I'm wondering if I don't need to take the thyroid medicine now, maybe the thyroid, maybe my thyroid is healed and the thyroid medicine is actually throwing me off even more. And so, you know, the next thing she said, she stopped taking it. She went back to her doctor and she told the doctor she felt a lot better off all the medications. Well, the doctor, you know, he wanted to know. So he ran tests. And he said to her, her thyroid was functionally functioning at a perfect level. Now it had not functioned properly in 15 years. So not only did she get healed of all the pain, but her thyroid was also sovereignly healed through deliverance. So it wasn't something you specifically ministered to during the session? Did you Bitterness. Did, you, but you did you minister to pray for healing for the thyroid as well? Oh, we did. We do. Yeah, we At always, the end of it. Yeah, right. we always okay. pray for the healing of the person. Then we ask the Holy Spirit to heal. But when once we called out that spirit of bitterness, the healing could come. Right. Because it was the bitterness that was blocking the healing. Mm-hmm. And so all the inflammation left. Now, I would like to say that that's what happened with me as well because I struggled with, I struggled with, um, fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue as well. And I came in for deliverance, totally fear-based childhood, same thing, walking on edge shells, alcoholic parent, a lot of codependency and things like that and fear of, of what you're going to find out when you come home every day. Uh, so that kind of stress on my immune system began to manifest 
pretty much in my 20s too. And I had come back a long way. I think by the time I had walked into a deliverance ministry, I had come back nutritionally and had done things with, you know, good eating and cutting out a lot of triggers that would come in with sugar and things like that. But there was still some problems. So when I went through deliverance and was free of all the fear, uh, and I noticed my system started to come back gently. So Sandra got pretty much, boom, miraculous healing through deliverance one day. Mine was a little bit different. I walked it out for about a year afterwards. And as my body came back Your into body, that okay, place right. into body peace got back, got healed, yeah. and healed, then I noticed all the things like the the stomach problems and all the other irrit- irritable things, they all just kind of settled out. So, you know, it can happen either way. It can be a fast thing with deliverance. I don't want to say that that happens all the time because it doesn't. But once the spiritual roots to the sickness are gone, then healing can take place. I've, I've, I've even had people that have come in and said, well, you know what? Went through deliverance, got free. Now I can go eat whatever I want and do whatever I want. And they went out and they indulged in sugar and they did all this damaging stuff to their body. And they came back and they said, well, uh, that spirit is still there. And I'm thinking, well, you know what? There is wisdom. You can be free of the spirit, but you do, oftentimes you need to treat your body temple well in order for it to respond. <laughs> but you don't want to test things like that either. So she got free right off the bat. Pain was gone. I walked mine out, but nonetheless, deliverance helped in both cases. Now, another one, another client we had come in, she was interesting. She had problems from the time she was five years old. She started being diagnosed one infirmity after another. And by the time I met her, she had been a missionary all over the world. She'd picked up a whole bunch of stuff from just traveling in and out of all these different foreign countries. But a lot of it with her was fear-based, abuse-based, things in the family, pretty much unloved, felt unloved, unnurtured, and that sort of thing. And she had all of these diagnosed illnesses and she was treating with a specific doctor. When we, when we prayed for her, I'll never forget this. I had actually let my intercessor pray the healing part for her because she was running the healing rooms at the time. And I would love to defer to her to pray for the healing portion since that was part of her strong anointing. And she was in front. So I was behind and she said, Phyllis, I don't know what I'm looking at. What spirit is this? And I came around and she was completely gray I mean, she had gone completely gray and I looked at my partner and I said, you know what, Ann, that's a, that's a spirit of death. And it was while you were on vacation and we were praying for this woman in your office. And I thought this is the last thing we need is to have Don come back from vacation. <laughs> One of our clients code in his office, right? So we, we called out that spirit of death. We commanded it to go. And we also, she continued to pray healing for her. And what happened after that was just miraculous. I was, I was, um, she had actually gone to a, a church meeting where one of my other clients was, and this client was gifted in the prophetic. Now, my freshly delivered client that had all these infirmities was, was, was there, and my other client walked up to her and said, oh my goodness, I can see that you're battling all these spirits of infirmity. I can see them in the spirit realm. They're trying to come back on you, but they can't. Now, she had no idea that this was my client. She had no idea that I had prayed for mm-hmm. her, but she could see it in the spirit. She said, but they can't come back upon you. What have you done? And she said, well, I just went through deliverance with above and beyond. And she said, oh my gosh, I know them. That's good. Just, you've just got to war that good fight in the spirit because you're winning the battle resist those, resist resist those spirits right so she did she got her healing and she came back in and she was so encouraged that she you know we don't we did not tell her to do this but she quit taking all of her medication mm-hmm. okay well her doctor had a fit she went back to her doctor her doctor had a fit and he said well, listen i'm glad that you're all happy with your deliverance and everything but i'm not going to be satisfied as your doctor until i can see it on a scan you know and run all these tests so he ran tons of tests and her blood was perfect he said he could not find one thing wrong with her and she had been on i think upwards of 15 medications before she came in so that was a powerful wow, that, that is powerful powerful one um one of the other fascinating stories i think this is probably one of the most fascinating stories i have is uh, a skype deliverance Okay. And she was over in Australia and she had Skyped in. She had been to several different deliverance ministries already by the time that she got to us. And she was asking me if I could possibly help her. Now, when she told me her family background, 
she was from um, a town in Australia where a lot of Druidism had come in on the shores, right? And Druidism is a, 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 in this stage is a secret man society, pretty much like the Masons, but its original roots were pretty barbaric. There was a lot of murdering and plundering of the land and things like that. And as as she she said, her family took oaths to the Druidism, to Druids. Um, they, there was several oaths that she, that her family had taken. Her parents had, it had come down through the family bloodline to look a little different. So her parents had actually gotten into a lot of new age things and the mysticism. A lot of that's involved with, you know, with the Druid, Druid heritage. Cause you know, the enemy will repackage the spirits to look different each generation, but she was having dreams of a satanic altar. Now she described it very perfectly that there was one large demon and then there were two on one side and three on the other. And this one was beckoning her like cheerfully to come and lay on this altar. And in her dream, she remembered that she really wanted to go. She was really felt like she was being lured in to lay on this sacrificial altar. But by the grace of God, she didn't. But when she came into me, she said, I know there is something significant about the Druidism and the, and the sacrificial altar that has something to do with all the stomach problems that have run through the women in my family bloodline. My grandmother, my great grandmother, my mom, my, all my sisters and I have got these severe stomach problems. Uh, and I think it has something to do with the family heritage, but I can't put the connection together. Well, I had never prayed for anybody that had Druid background, you know, I mean, we're talking Australia. So I called one of my friends who had it was big in deliverance ministry. And he, he even knew the town in Burberry, Australia, where she lived and the Druids that came in and all the oaths that they took. So I thought this is divine because she said, I knew I was drawn to your ministry to get my final healing. And I thought at first I thought, wow, I'm way over my pay grade with this you know, Druidism. And she's struggling with things like, um, ulcerative colitis. And so when, and, and so when we prayed for her, um, we had her break, we broke all of these oaths and all of these vows. And then we called out the spirits that could have brought in this thing. Cause what we, what we recognized was the Druids back in the day, they would actually disembowel the women. Mm. They'd kill the men and disembowel the women. They would rip their guts out. So, and they would do that to the virgins, right? So this sacrificial altar was, was clearly that I'm not even going to mention that demon's name, but he was a very ruling authority over in that part of that, the, the country of, of the world. And it, and it was about a virgin sacrifice and disemboweling. So she was right in on point with, with the, with the, the dream. So when we called out those spirits that came in to disembowel the virgins, you know, then it was very lengthy. She manifested, it sounded like sonar, like a, like a dolphin sonar, just wailing. And it went on and on and on as the spirit released from her. Now she had had a test prior to coming in that she had not gotten the um, results for because she didn't want to hear them before she went through deliverance. She walked out her deliverance. She said she really warred for her deliverance. It wasn't easy. She said she really had to war those spirits coming back. Uh, and then she got the victory. She told me that she was actually going to the bathroom 15 to 18 times a day before she came in for deliverance. Now, this is a young designer over there with a brand new marriage and a brand new baby, you know, like within the last two or three years. And she had no life. She couldn't leave her house. She was tethered to the bathroom because of this disemboweling that was going on with this ulcerative colitis. So she uh, called me up. And she said, I have, I went from going 15 times a day to the bathroom to the very next day after deliverance, she went twice. So those spirits that came in to create that, which are very unique to her, were gone now. So she's, you know, she's walking in that healing and she's doing very well today. So that was a very, very good one. Um, and well, I think the, the colitis emphasized what we talked about before was that it's just, they don't really, you know fear-based things and they don't it's a spiritual root mm -hmm. behind these things mm -hmm. it's like it's not just you know we get inflammations there's f medical physical things that happen but mm -hmm. this was like a, a spiritual and hers mm -hmm. like you say kind of unique because of the the family background and the things in druidism and i mean occultic and so there's very and a lot of fear the women were all very fear, afraid yeah 
you know, obviously if you had that kind of barbaric stuff going on in the past, the spirit that would come down through the family bloodline would be fear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when she, when she did call the doctors back, um, tell them she didn't need to come in. They told her, Oh no, you do because you've been diagnosed with severe ulcerative colitis. And, and so she went back in, they let, she let him run the test. She had nothing, nothing was totally healed. So that was exciting. And, you know, then we've had others that have come in that have been delivered from celiac disease. They came in, you know, it, it was almost like a sidebar to their deliverance. Not one of the things that they actually came in with, something that they really had learned to live with. But they, too, had struggled with an extremely abusive childhood, a lot of a torture, a lot of being chased by an ex-husband, um, a lot of loss in the family where they were stripped down to almost like living like a vagabond from town to town, being trying to run away from this torturous husband, ex-husband. And she had developed celiac disease. Mm. So when she came in for prayer for fear and abuse and things that were still scattering her because of distraction, because of her used to having to get up and run all the time, her phone call to me afterwards was unique. She said, you know what? I got free from when you prayed healing over, um, over me. I, I, I recognized that I wasn't having any of the problems with my stomach and, uh, and the celiac disease left. And I'll tell you how I know it left. Cause I started eating a lot of wheat products and I didn't have any more problem. And she said, right up until the time I came in, I was having some severe problems with celiac disease. But again, a lot of the spiritual stuff that we had called out, her body came back into that normal balance and she was free. So it's fascinating to see how God does this. And there's no one way. It's not, it's not ne always next day. Now these are a couple of next days, but you know, I, I asked God that. Okay. So, you know, I do this all the time. These people have all been healed next day. <laughs> I had to walk mine out. You know. Uh, yeah, it varies from person to person. In fact, mm -hmm. as you're speaking, I'm re remembering a one of our released a sword deliverance seminar attendees. He went through our seminar, and those where we do, you know, the the teaching, and we do we have a group that helps us pray and minister mm -hmm. deliverance to people. He told me, pulled me aside afterwards. He says he's his asthma is gone. Wow. I mean, no, sorry, his allergies allergies, allergies wow. was gone. I remember that. And it's so fear is butts behind allergies, right? Now he's promised me, and I'm still waiting to get a testimony. Yeah, so put on the website, and he's good, and he'll do it. Yeah, he will. So it was just amazing. It was just, you know, yes, we pray and we come up, call against the spirit, the allergies, and different things under infirmities. But you know, it was just he just was, it was amazed. He said, mm -hmm. "I've got, you know, I've got ministered to. I feel great. This happened." But he says that allergy completely gone. Wow. And so that was just uh, yay God. You yay. Know, when that yeah. happens because it, it wasn't allergies that brought me. You know, I got bad allergies. I want to get prayed for. It's like mm -hmm. those were just him, just part of his life. He was mm -hmm. used to it, and you know, people, you know, you learn how to cope with their devils. Right. You know, and you know, somebody said life can become about demon management, and we just learn how. Uh. to you know, accept things. And it's like allergies. We shouldn't have to accept, yeah, it's, no. you know, that's not how it goes. And asthma is fear based too. Sure. So I thought that was interesting that, yeah, praise God. He was just completely free from them and no longer had that, uh, that was allergies. Wow. In his life. Well, you know what? I love to tell the stories, Don. That's a big thing. Cause I think, you know, the, the scripture is, I believe it's Jeremiah nine twenty one, where it says, let him who glories glory in this, that he understands me. And so the stories are... And the word of the testimony, And the right? word of the coming, testimony. We're coming by the yeah. word of the name and the word of the, the testimony. The word of the testimony. So what we've done, you know, my pastors and I, and Don's gracious to let me mention this, is we've developed a, a like a little television show to get these victory stories. If you liked this show and you like hearing the stories and you like knowing how to be free, then I would ask you to go to our new, our new show that we've developed. It's called God's view today. The Lord told me years ago that he wanted his own show called God's view. So we've got it out there. We've incorporated the same premise of what you might see on the view, although we don't argue and fight with each other. We uphold God and speak the goodness of God. But we've got to actually a lot of these guests that are coming on. Um, Elise, who was in the Druidism, did a beautiful, uh, she taped it, her husband's at Hillsong, and she put a professional piece together for us to use on the show. So you can see Elise go through her story and talked about how she was delivered from ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. And then Sandra, who was, I mentioned earlier, who was delivered from the bitterness and the thyroid problems and the fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue has come on the show as well. So if you just go to YouTube and you type in the word God's view today, you'll get all the shows where our plan is to film 24 
Um, so far, I think we're, we've filled 14, so we have 10 left to go and we have no, there's nothing, there's no motivation to it. It's just to get the, the, the love of God and the victories of God. I think we've all seen enough of all the gloom and doom and gossip. So this is a 30 minute show, you know, it's entertaining. We're all very jovial and, but we love to share the stories and the goodness of God. And so go find that God's view today on YouTube. Do it. It's worth it. <laughs> Subscribe, you see, and you can get the videos release them and and uh, every time they get a new one out they will they, you will receive notice of that and probably a good time to put in a plug for our channel as well we haven't done that much we above and beyond we have a, a, a channel on youtube above and beyond um, christian counseling it's a and b counseling is our channel name and so subscribe it's uh you know you'll i think you'll be blessed by both of those so with that i think hopefully you've learned some things today about spiritual roots of sickness and diseases maybe it's tweaked you um, um, got you <laughs> thinking. You. <laughs> yeah, tweet. I like that word too. Um, mm-hmm. Just to start thinking about, um, you know, if you're physically infirm or know somebody who is and can't just can't get the victory over some of these conditions, um, consider the spiritual side of it. Consider deliverance ministry and get to the root. Because I think the thing about deliverance ministry that other methodologies, even Christian counseling, can't do is you can get to the root of things many times. We're the first to say there's not demons everywhere, there's not demons behind every problem. But if there's a demonic stronghold there, the only hope, the only way for victory is getting that spirit kicked out. Mm-hmm. So if it rings, you know, true, true to you, any of things we talked about in this physical realm or any other issue, please, you know, consider contacting us. Uh, above and beyond Christian counseling, get a hold of us. We do uh, sessions online. Of course, we do them in our Florida offices, but literally, we people are finding us from all over the world. And so, wherever you are, we can help you if you need help. So, consider doing that through our website. Um, we'd love to hear from you, topic suggestions. Um, we try to put these things together based on feedback that we get from you, the listeners. That's really we're our most important um, aspect of these is that we hopefully put out good content for you. Um, Leave us a review on iTunes or on our website and we will get you a free copy of our deliverance ministry, plain and simple manuals. That's there. Um, Also, we've got uh, the resource library that is new for us. It's a way for you can sign up on, on once again, ambcounseling.com or the Academy. There's a link there to click sign up. You'll get um, access to all of our resources um, articles, podcasts, videos, slide shares, all our YouTube videos are, you can get linked to from there as well. You can do that and then you get an email when we put turn out new content to totally free. And then finally is we're going to be having a ministry partners program coming out at some point here in this, this kind of a pre-announcement, I won't call it an announcement where you'll have an opportunity to be regularly partner with us to help expand the ministry of deliverance to others who need it. And also people around the world and around the country, you know, churches, counselors, people who maybe need help to get it into their church. And that's mm-hmm. going to be our focus. Mm-hmm. So I want to uh, broaden stay, the kingdom, broaden the kingdom. So yeah, stay alert for that. We'll have more information on that as soon as we get that put together. Uh, once again, thank you for listening to this. Tell your friends, you know, share this link, get it over to other people who need to hear it and uh, subscribe and we'll try to keep the good content coming. God bless you all. And thank you for listening. Thank you.